Hello and Namaskar. I'm uh, grateful to you all for giving your time to get together with us and uh, share this uh, beautiful evening or morning, depending upon your time of zone. Uh, we have a great uh, discussion. We have a plethora of uh, specialists from across the globe with diverse experience and all extremely focused and expert in the field of providing care to children with type 1 diabetes. So it's going to be exciting. You listen to their views, and I think you'll get plenty of time in the end, towards the end to also ask your questions and answers. Let me begin by introducing Daya Champs. These are the champions, diabetic children from Haridwar Kankal, who under the patronage and expertise of uh, Dr. Swami Shiv Kumar, Swami Dayadhipananda ji, who is also the superintendent of the Ramakrishna Hospital uh, and an MBBS doctor and a diabetes specialist who has uh, taken care of these children. And I had the personal pleasure of seeing and interacting with some of them on my visits to Kanko. And these children have uh, started with the hospital and learned the integrative uh, medicine techniques and have gone on to actually convert their uh, adversity into an opportunity and adopt a yogic lifestyle, which has really blossomed their creative self and they have gone on to really uh, enjoy the purpose and meaning of their life. A very inspiring tale. And uh, please listen to the story of these beautiful Dai Champs uh, in their own words. Myself, Surbhi Chaudhary, and I'm type 1 diabetic for the last 14 years. I'm doing master's in science. It was a shock to my family that a child can also get diabetes. So at that time, uh, by luck, I can say, I've got diagnosed with diabetes and uh, I've got admitted to Ramkrishan Mission Haridwar. And over there, uh, Dr. Santosh Gupta uh, started visiting over there from US and uh, she started making a group of all the type 1 diabetics and I was the very first child. So uh, from the very starting, I can say I'm in very safe hands and I feel very proud of that because uh, so many uh, kids come to us when they get severe complications. They don't know what to do at that time. But uh, from the very starting, I'm in very safe hands. So uh, when I started my treatment, uh, I was just doing what I've uh, been taught about diabetes that you have to take insulin four times a day and you have to check your blood sugar thrice a day and you have to take a proper diet. So I was uh, continuing that but uh, they also encouraged me to uh, go for yoga and exercise. So I started doing that too. So I have noticed that my uh, insulin uh, requirement, total insulin requirement has reduced from 60 to 50 after including exercise in my routine. So uh, that was also a kind of happiness for me that, yes, my insulin requirement is decreasing, that I'm doing something good with it. So after that, uh, I came to know about a special diet, I can say, which I'm following from the last 15 days. Uh, we can call it as a integrated medicine practice. My journey had, it was a, definitely a roller coaster ride, but uh, somehow I managed uh, keeping my blood sugars in level with the help of uh, Swami Dayadipananda Maharaj Ji from Ramakrishan Mission. I've learned a lot of things. They also encouraged me to uh, go for yoga and exercise. So I started doing that too. So I've noticed that my uh, insulin uh, requirement, total insulin requirement has reduced from 60 to 50 after including exercise in my routine. So uh, that was also a kind of happiness for me that, yes, my insulin requirement is decreasing. Good morning, sir. I am Ujwal Singh and I hail from Dehradun. I am 19 years old and I am currently pursuing bachelor's in business administration from Dehradun itself. And I am diabetic from past 10 years. I went to Ramakrishna Mission Hospital uh, under the mentorship of uh, Swami Dayadipa Dandanda. I was told different aspects or I would say different approaches of how to see diabetes as a positive quality inside you. Uh, I learned that discipline can be learned with diabetes. My name is Mayank, I belong to Haridwar. And I have last 15 years of type 1 diabetes. And I have a job in the financial sector. 
मुझे एक्चुअली टाइप वन डायबिटीज हुई थी 2005 में जब मैं 15 इयर्स का था अच्छा और उस टाइम मैं नाइन्थ क्लास में था तब मुझे टाइप वन डायबिटीज हुई थी और मैं यहाँ पर रामकिशन मिशन हॉस्पिटल में मैं आया सिक्स इयर्स डेट छः साल के बाद में आया लेकिन वहाँ से ही एक मेरा जो एक प्रॉपर एक जो ट्रीटमेंट मिलना स्टार्ट हुआ वो वहाँ से ही स्टार्ट हुआ हम लोगों की जो लाइफ है वो रामकिशन मिशन हॉस्पिटल में आने के बाद इसलिए बदली है क्योंकि यहाँ पर हमें ट्रीटमेंट जो है जो एक इंसुलिन है वो तो ओवरऑल हम कहीं पर भी जाते वहाँ पर भी इसका ट्रीटमेंट इंसुलिन ही था लेकिन यहाँ पर एक जो डिफरेंस चीज है वो ये है कि यहाँ पर हर बच्चे को एजुकेट किया जाता है हर एक बच्चे की काउंसलिंग की जाती है बच्चे के साथ साथ उसके पेरेंट्स की भी काउंसलिंग की जाती है जो सर हैं डॉक्टर साहब हैं जो स्टाफ है नर्सिंग मैम हैं जो वहां पर जो इन्होंने डेडिकेटेड एक मैम हमें डेडिकेट की हुई है कि ये आपको गाइड करेंगे ये आपको काउंसिल करेंगे ये आपको एजुकेट करेंगे तो ये एक बहुत अच्छी बात है Thank you all for sharing your experience. It's uh, it's always inspiring to listen to these children who have actually learned the diabetes management, learned the physical implications, and then integrated their physical health with their mental, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual health, and have uh, elevated their creativity to the level that they are doing such wonderful work and going along and studying. Beautiful, inspiring. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Swami Daya Dhipananda Ji, also known as Dr. Shiv Kumar, who is a, an MBBS doctor from Karnataka, who later on went ahead and took sannyas from Ramakrishna Order and is a monk and a Swami of a Ramakrishna Order. It gives me personal joy to introduce him. I've been so much benefited from my association with him for the past uh, five years. Uh, he is a God's man doing God's work, a real karm yogi. And uh, I spent a month with him recently and learned yoga, dhyana, pranayama from him and all the nuances of the integrative uh, medicine, which I'm practicing in my own life. Uh, so without uh, further uh, ado, I would like to introduce and have Dr. Shiv Kumar Swami Deadhipananji to present to us uh, his uh, point of view on uh, type 1 diabetes management. Swamiji. Namaskar, a warm good evening to all. Respected Dr. Sushi Sharmaji, my honorary consultants, eminent endocrinologists, research workers in the field of diabetes, Dr. Pratik Chaudhary, Dr. Ravikanji, Dr. Srikant Haji, my special thanks to the organizers of AAYM, especially the members and the program coordinator, Anjali, who has put up a lot of efforts to have this platform in which we can share a few things which will be useful to all when it comes to management of diabetes. Now, I take you all to the PowerPoint presentation through which we shall learn few basic things about management of diabetes. So my topic for today's discussion is role of yoga in diabetes mellitus. This is the place where I am privileged to work, Ramakrishna Mission Seva Shram Kankal Haridwar located in the northern part of India. This hospital was started in the year 1901 at the behest of Swami Vivekananda by his direct disciple Swami Kalyanananda. We have 24 into 7 emergency ICU and a full-fledged hospital where we have got all the full-time consultants living in the campus and serving the poor and needy. This is a special picture which you are all seeing. Children with type 1 diabetes celebrating their so-called disease or a lifelong disorder. These are the unique moments for me wherein I see my children on the platform 
during the celebration of World Diabetes Day, where they perform colorful programs on the stage in front of all the dignitaries once in a year in our Ramakrishna Mission Sevashrama premises. Dear friends, as we know, diabetes is a chronic preventable lifestyle disorder characterized by increased blood sugars. When it comes to types, we know type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, gestational diabetes, secondary diabetes due to other diseases of the pancreas. Today, I'll try to focus on the type 1 diabetes. So when we talk about the common causes of diabetes, why the blood sugars are going up, many of the times we can get an answer. Yes, these are preventable, but there are some lifestyle disorders like physical inactivity because of which we get central obesity and the common stress that everybody is facing today may lead to diabetes and that's a preventable cause. So what happens in diabetes? Why the blood sugars go up? Because of the insulin resistance. Now, can diabetes be controlled with yoga, exercise? Yes. To understand this, first of all, we should understand there is a body-mind connection. And we are not just this body and mind, but there is soul or spirit the highest energy which can neither be created nor destroyed that universal energy which runs the whole universe also runs our body and mind so when you understand there is something behind this body we get to know few more things the grass body which we are seeing outside which is made up of the food that i eat i am swami dayadipananda i have got a form and name the external form, what you are seeing, that is called as Annamaya Kosha, the physical body. And energy required to, to, to run this body is the, the vital energy. So that is called as Pranamaya Kosha. Yes, I have got a body and there is some energy, vital energy, which runs this body. But there is something behind it which makes me to function. For example, I have got my hand. If you give a, a knife in this hand, that knife can be used either for cutting somebody's neck and harming him or doing a surgery to save a life of a person who comes in our, in our, in our emergency. So what is that? which makes to do sometimes good, sometimes bad. That is our mind behind this body and prana shakti. That is manomaya kosha. Once my mind is trained with right thinking, right living, my mind gets proper directions. The trained mind, which is having a capacity to think definitively, that is called as vijnanamaya kosha. And behind this, that energy, highest energy, universal energy, which runs everything, because of that, all these layers, all these, what I talk, Annamaya, Pranamaya, Manomaya, Vijnanamaya Kosha running is the Anandamaya Kosha. Ananda, the bliss, the eternal joy comes off out of our real nature, that is, soul spirit if you are a believer of god god himself is running this body so when we understand this body what we are seeing externally and the diseases which are seen in this physical body also has some higher dimensions so when we understand then we really understand the role of integrated medicine so when we understand we are not this physical body and mind, Annamaya Kosha, Pranamaya Kosha, Manomaya Kosha, Vijnanamaya Kosha, Anandamaya Kosha, we also need to attend all these. Then only we, 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 we feel better. That's what integrated medicine means. And WHO also says, World Health Organization, physical, mental, social, and Spiritual well-being of a person and not just free from disease. 
So when we understand the definition of WHO, when we understand the five layers which is running this body and our body uh, whole in a, uh, in a whole shell, then we understand when we want to address anybody for wellness, he should be addressed for Annamaya Kosha to keep this physical body fit. One needs to do proper physical exercise, asanas and some exercises and to take care of the Pranamaya Kosha which runs this body, that vital energy we need to learn to breathe properly that is learned through Pranayamas and by doing proper meditation, relaxation techniques, our mind gets trained, that, that mind runs this which, fun, which makes this body to function. So that mind gets trained by meditation and relax, breathing, relaxing exercises. So when we talk about Jnanamaya Kosha, which directs this Manomaya Kosha to function in a proper way, we should take help of scriptures like Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, and uh, all great religious teachers that will help us to develop our Jnanamaya Kosha. Anandamaya Kosha, which is our real nature, that can be read by practicing Karma Yoga, doing the work in the spirit of service, by doing good to others, that is called as Karma Yoga. Also, it can be attained by proper meditation when one reaches the state of Samadhi. So, this is in brief about the different layers of our body, the, the layers which are behind or beyond this physical body. So when I talk about type 1 diabetes, as we all know, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder due to which our body has failed to produce insulin. So as a practicing allopathic doctor, I teach my diabetic children how to manage their blood sugars how to take insulin according to food that they eat, how to take care of their physical, mental, social, emotional and spiritual well-being. That's where role of yoga comes, especially in the management of type 1 diabetes. It's very unique. In the journey of 10 years at Ramakrishna Mission Haridwar, with the help of eminent doctors from India and outside India, we have developed a module by which more than 300 type 1 diabetic children are leading a healthy and happy life. So yoga and pranayama, as I said, benefit anybody immensely for a healthy life, for being wealthy and being well. So what are these yogasanas and how they are going to help us? They said obesity is a very high risk for somebody to develop diabetes. And these type 1 diabetes children, if they develop obesity, they can have added complications. So yogasanas help in reducing the obesity, thereby decreasing insulin resistance. So, to name few yogasanas and pranayamas, which can be practiced by everybody and especially type 1 diabetic children and any other diabetic patient are Bhastrika, Kapalbhati, Anulomilom, Brahmri, Udgita, Surya Namaskara, Tadasana, Trikonasana, Paschimottasana, Bhujangasana, Shavasana. So, these are the few postures which can be learn from your yoga experts who is available with you. These are my type 1 diabetic children who are very well versed to take care of their blood sugars because they get proper DSME, Diabetes Self-Management Education. Along with that, we conduct monthly support group meeting in which the children, parents are taught about diabetes by expert speakers online, by local eminent people, by doing counseling. So like that, with that effort, which is done by all these children are performing. 
this girl is vishika when she came to me she was 3 year old now she is 10 year old she has become a yoga expert we also conduct a uh, support group meeting and summer camps where we teach them yogasana and pranayama what does pranayama does as i said pranayama helps in relieving the breathing pattern thereby relieving the stress so in the beginning when i introduced stress and if you don't know how to breathe properly your vital energy is not being functioning properly then you get a you become a high risk candidate to develop metabolic disorders autoimmune disorders so why pranayama has immense benefit by by practicing pranayama our vital energy is properly distributed and we are stress free so pranayama like anulom vilom kapal bhati so anulom vilom we can see breathe through left nostril breathe out through right nostril breathe in through right nostril and breathe out to two, through left nostril by doing this our breathing is balanced so when there is equilibrium between body and mind we are stress free when we are stress free our hormones are in order and there is less chance of getting metabolic disorders and less chance of getting autoimmune disorders so we one can practice the principles of treatment as taught by our own system along with that meditation prayer and yoga we have immense health benefits what i recommend is the treating doctor should also practice yoga asana pranayama prayer and meditation along with the children especially in the support group meeting ramakrishna mission haridwar conducts every month support group meeting last sunday and for the last 10 years not even a single month they, it, it has gone where we have not conducted support group meeting spiritual strength helps us to overcome hardships we can take healthy decisions which are good for me and for others that helps in to live longer studies have shown all these also our scriptures have taught uh, bhagavad gita shri krishna teaches even a little bit of spirituality saves one from great dangers so if you practice even little little we get immense benefits the message of swami vivekananda strength is life weakness is death so we should learn how to become physically mentally socially emotionally and spiritually strong so that we lead a happy life by becoming fit by being fit healthy what we do we do help others once i become a, a good person i can help others to become good that's what be and make the few pictures of the support group meeting where eminent people come and participate in our support group meeting so with this i thank one and all for your patient listening thank you swami ji that was a beautiful presentation and uh, being a student of science you are an, a doctor uh, allopathic mbbs you combine and integrate the best of the east with the best of the west and you have created this beautiful model for treating these diabetes children uh, thank you and uh, now i'll invite surbhi to uh, share her experience with us namaskar good evening everyone myself surbhi chaudhary i'm 24 years old and i'm type 1 diabetic for the last 14 years so uh, when i got diagnosed with diabetes at that time there was not uh, awareness about type 1 diabetes only my parents were aware about type 2 diabetes they didn't know that a child can also get diabetes so at that time uh, uh, by luck i can say i got diagnosed with diabetes and i got admitted to ramkrishna mission haridwar over there i got to know uh, the all the things about diabetes that uh, this is just a condition in which we just have to take insulin from outside rest we are very much healthy so uh, at that time uh, i personally want to share something with you all that i had an in inhibition 
to not to tell everyone about diabetes that i am a diabetic i feel very shy i feel very worried about it that if i tell everyone about diabetes then what will they say so um, i just used to visit my doctor take medicines and come back to my home so that was the only thing i was following so um, slowly and gradually i can say uh, i got to know i realized that it was not enough what am i doing with my life so uh, i realized that uh, i need a family i need a support i need emotional support i need to meet others like me who can help me out in my journey so at that time maharaj ji told me that i'm not alone there are many others like me so i started going to the support group meetings so i used to sit on the back seat and used to watch all the things which are going on then slowly with the help of maharaj ji i uh, started leading the meetings uh, which you organize every month so uh, now i can say that i am not afraid of diabetes at all with proper knowledge which i have got from ramkrishan mission uh, i feel very proud of myself that i am a diabetic i can proudly say that yes i have got diabetes and uh it's a really good thing so um the support which i have got from ramkrishan mission so i wanted to uh, give that to others also so uh i started serving others also serving mankind i can say so uh um all the things which i have learned from ramkrishan mission i uh, started sharing with my friends with others who have type 1 diabetes so uh at that time when uh, i was diagnosed my family was very much in shock but they supported me a lot and support is the foremost thing that is needed by a child who has recently got diagnosed with diabetes so uh, now i am very much uh, inspired to uh, share my journey with everyone and i don't feel uh, that i am uh, doing anything bad in my life i'm doing really good with diabetes so uh like uh if i share something with others so i feel like it may help many children like me who feel alone because of diabetes so if one wants to live happily with diabetes then they should not hide themselves they should think positively in every aspect so uh by taking proper treatment and by taking proper knowledge one can do wonderful work Uh, with diabetes so uh, for me type 1 diabetes is blessing in this guys i have got lot of friends just because of diabetes i have got to meet wonderful wonderful people like you so uh, i have got a family who support me in every ups and downs and uh, i do feel very proud of that along with my studies i help my mother i help others who are diabetic also so uh, i do follow a healthy routine and because of yoga and exercise which uh, i started following my total uh, insulin requirement has came down to 50 from 60 and then after some time i started uh, bringing slight changes to my diet and uh, because of those changes now my total uh, insulin requirement has reduced to 20 and it's a really good thing and i feel very good that i am doing something good with my life my insulin requirement is reducing so uh, everyone can do that if they follow, follow a healthy routine if they uh, if they set a goal then they will definitely have success so um, i would like to give everyone a message that uh, if you are a diabetic if your child is diagnosed with diabetes so help them to come out of this trauma you don't need to uh, show them that they have got something in their life uh, be- because of that they will not be able to do anything in their life you just need to support them and that support can do wonders so uh, my message for all is if you want to live a healthy life then tie it to a goal not to people or things then you will be able to live a very happy life with anything which you have in your life just feel proud of that thank you so much Thank you, Surbe. Thank you for sharing your personal story. It's very inspiring, and you are a true champion and a role model for uh, many generations and people to follow. Uh, I'm grateful that you came and shared your experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. It gives me great honor to introduce our uh, next uh, speaker, 
Dr. Shikanta, uh, he is uh, a remarkable gentleman who is actually the starter and originator of Samadpun Disha. He's a senior consultant endocrinologist. He did his uh, MD in uh, endocrinology from All India Institute of Medical Sciences and then moved to a prestigious uh, Duke University in America where he did his endocrinology fellowship from. And then he went ahead and uh, became an investigator fellow at Harvard's uh, world-renowned Jocelyn Diabetes Center. Uh, and he was there until 1982. And then out of the goodness of his heart and his love and service for his country, he decided to come back to India and uh, serve uh, India. And for all the good work that he did in 2018, he got Dr. B.C. Roy Award for selfless, outstanding lifetime service and contribution to mankind. He has started the Samatha model and uh, without further delay, I would have uh, Dr. Shikanta share his uh, experience with us and uh, give us the joy of listening to his good work. Namaste. Anjali, uh, I have to share the screen. Shri Siaram, Shri Siaram, Shri Om, Shri Om, Shri Om, Shri Om, Shri Siaram, Shri Siaram. Respected teachers, friends, and the young ones, greetings from Samatvam Nanasanjivani, Bangalore, India. Sadashiva Samarambam, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Pariyantam, one day Guru Paramparam. I thank all the organizers and Swami Dayadipanandji for this unique learning opportunity. Let me submit my reverence to Guru Maharaj Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, the Holy Mother, and Swami Vekananda. To Swami Sarvagatananda, the monk of the Harvard MIT Vedanta Society, for giving me meaning and purpose in life. He taught us to give more than we take. My pranams to Swami Asheshanandaji Maharaj, who told all his disciples, do not be a creeper, be a tree. As a doctor and a scientist and a human being and all of us, we talk about science, medicine and immortality. And we have to question, in the scheme of things, where is God? To share the words of Dr. Albert Einstein, he commented, science without religion is lame, religion without science is blind. If you walk into the portals of MIT in Boston, this inscription welcomes you at the gate. Dr. Yella Pragada Subarao, one of the foremost physician scientists of India and America, who spent later part in America, who deserved a couple Nobel Prizes from chemotherapy to ATP, etc. He tells us science simply prolongs life, religion deepens it. More recently, Professor NVC Swami, former director of IIT Madras, tells his students, have your feet firmly grounded in spirituality, hold your head high in science. After retiring from IIT, NVC Swami spent rest of his life teaching Bhagavad Gita and the message of Sri Vivekananda. Now, when we talk of science, it is physical science and spiritual science. I have compiled to you two stories. The first story is about the beta cells and the artificial pancreas. The story of Jamie Kursi, Dr. Rehan Lal, and the stars of India. I'm sure Pratik, who is an expert in this, will enlighten you more. Coming to the spiritual science, let me share with you more than 30 years journey of Camps Man Mohan, most endearing, and the dream of an equal society, and Sri Basavanna, the saint philosopher of Karnataka. First, the story of beta cells, artificial pancreas, and Jamie. All of us know one of the most wonderful cells 
most smart stealth God has ever created are the beta cells of the islets of Langer hands. In simple words, the beta cells is a very intricate machinery consisting of the glucose sensor as shown on the left side of the diagram, the insulin factory as shown on the right side. In between, there is a complex set of coordinated metabolic reactions, ion channels, etc., which I call it as the beta cell brain. The end result is perfect minute to minute, second to second, glucose homeostasis, insulin secretion. As Swamiji mentioned, we have realized for more than a uh, half a century that unfortunately in type 1 diabetes, for no fault of their own, the islet beta cells of these young children get destroyed by an autoimmune mechanism. And one of the hallmarks being these antibodies to the islets in the blood. This associated with inflammation, insulitis of the islets and progressive slow destruction of all the beta cells to complete insulin deficiency. Many may not know that this discovery of autoimmune beta cell destruction and pre-type 1 diabetes, that type 1 is not an acute disease, slow disease, originated in All India Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, traveled to uh, Durham and Boston where it culminated. These are my two revered Gurudevs. As early as 1983, when the discovery of pre-type 1 diabetes was done, we, we along with others dreamt whether this disease can be nipped in the bud, where the autoimmune destruction can be halted right at its origins. The dream at that time, and it continues, is antigen-specific vaccination with beta cell antigens uh, for uh, prevention of type 1 diabetes using the Nobel Prize winning technique of monoclonal antibodies. But the dream has thus far not been fully realized throughout the world. Despite this, most people in the field know that currently there are more than 500 treatment strategies by which you can completely prevent or cure type 1 diabetes in the mouse model called NOD mouse. We hope that one day soon, this research will be translated and the type 1 diabetes will be eradicated like polio. Till the time, you all know that insulin replacement therapy by any form is the life-saving. In simple terms, any form of insulin replacement therapy, the patient, the doctor and the insulin pump have to think and behave like the pancreas made by Lord Almighty. We have the open loop insulin pumps, the sensor augmented open loops, and finally the complete closed loop referred to as the artificial pancreas. It is an engineering replica of the God's beta cell where a continuous glucose sensor talks to the insulin pump using a software known as control algorithm and try to maintain near normal glucose homeostasis. Several forms of artificial pancreas are a reality. In addition to the engineering solution, a biological solution, which has promised in the future is artificial beta cells. To generate artificial beta cells, either from stem cells or trans differentiation from acinar or liver cells, we hope this has succeeded in animal models. Hope the dream will be true for humans. Still, even the new beta cells have to be protected by immunoisolation from recurrent attack by the body's immune system. Now, coming to the Jamie story. We received an email at 1 a.m. on September 20, 2019 from a young 15-year-old girl from California called Jamie which had laid the foundation of Atmanirbhar Bharat and Self-Reliant India. Jamie and the father runs a software company and has a branch in Bangalore. They decided to end six months early this year and they started, they Googled us and our work and came. Jamie got diabetes at the age of one. 
and now she is a 15 a student at stanford and the dream of their family is to make a low cost economical make in india artificial pancreas in bangalore for the whole world and how did jamie and family they are pursuing this dream this is jamie's doctor from stanford he is another nobel soul called rahan lal rahan lal got type 1 diabetes as a youngster and he went on to berkeley became an electrical engineer with the hope of finding an engineering cure for diabetes but as he was doing his engineering his 12 year old sister also developed type 1 diabetes this further motivated him and then he joined medical school became an endocrinologist and now he is world one of the world authorities on artificial pancreas he uses the same he is jamie's doctor and jamie and rehan have started the indian dream jamie spent several months uh, in bangalore with with our center the end result on march 12 2020 six of our indian children uh, got initiated in the artificial pancreas and rehanlal considers this is the most rapid transcontinental artificial pancreas program ever implemented you can see several of the indian sar the scientists here and uh, it, it took lot of ground work entirely the generosity and all the material generated from us it's an open android aps this is j young jamie with her family at at samathwa one example this is young cg who uses insulin pump for several years she's a biotech engineer despite this before going on the artificial pancreas as seen on the red her hypoglycemic episodes were from 10 to 70% below the range and time within the range was only 20 to 50% with extreme glucose variability this is how they started their artificial pancreas many of you may not be familiar the green line shows near perfect glucose control in the range of 80 to 160 Within seven days of the artificial pancreas, her timing range jumped to 91 percent, and time below the range only to one percent, and this persisted. All this is fine. It's time for me to move to the other story about the human spirit. We all know that insulin is life-saving, and has saved millions and millions, and continues. but there is another very equally important life saving medicine which you need to call as love and care how to deliver it uh, the person sitting here is professor ahuja when i returned on october 3rd 87 the first assignment he gave me was gifted me with 500 type 1 children from at the all india institute of medical sciences and thus began the series of camps known as camp manmohan after professor manmohan singh ahuja the father of indian endocrinology diabetes he was trained in mass general and hammersmith the journey continued the poorest of the poor uh, uh, they shared their lives and this is the last one 2019 uh, about 100 children traveled along with about 30 medical people to a remote village in karnataka 250 kilometers from bangalore blessed by the revered medical scientists and the spiritual scientists just a glimpse of the heaven on earth the health education medical care uh bringing smiles on their face personality development cultural and enri enri uh, enrichment or uh, children from all castes and religions every time we do a program we realize it is not that we the health professionals who are helping these children it is they who give us infinite unconditional love and care and share and make us better human beings let me end with a most inspiring story of spurti spurti is 14 years young and she comes from a village uh, called arsikere near bangalore she is now 14 at the age of 9 when she developed type 1 diabetes the family was surrounded with hopelessness and helplessness 
running from hospitals with comas and this the family went into a pact a suicide pact to kill all themselves entire family the young 9 year old spurti told their parents don't let us not do it i'll bring pride to you 2 years ago spurti won a global art contest for her 2 minute inspirational video called children with diabetes uh, future stars it's on youtube if time we permit so we collected money spurti went to united nations in new york along with her father and now she received the award and she hopes to become a doctor and that to a pediatric endocrinologist let me conclude yes insulin is life saving so is love and care as swami ji has told science and spirituality have to be integrated and synthesized in every aspect of life including human health and that, that too also specifically for this innocent children may the typhoon children all over the world be blessed thank you very much hari om thanks for the learning opportunity thank you all thank you dr shrikant that was a beautiful uh, journey that you took us through pathophysiology and through science and i also was very moved to see how beautifully you combine knowledge and wisdom and also a bit of philosophy and you yourself are a role model and uh, an inspiration and uh, doing such great work uh, was, it was heartfelt thank you thank you for sharing with us it gives me great joy to introduce our next speaker it's uh, dr pratik choudhry dr choudhry is a professor and a consultant uh, endocrinologist at lester diabetes clinic university of lester in england uh, he is confined only to treating uh, type 1 diabetes so he's a highly specialized person he had his uh, md uh, subject as glu continuous glucose monitoring and he spent 15 years uh, at king's college london training and he's also the co-lead of uh, uk insulin uh, pump project and uh, he brings a uh, unique uh, confluence of uh, education psychology and technology in the field of uh, type 1 diabetes So I'm I'm delighted to introduce uh, Dr. Chaudhary and uh, we're to listen to his beautiful words of wisdom. Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you, Amishka. And um, I'm just hope uh, get my slides over. So um, I think it's very hard to follow those uh, three talks, Swamiji, with the introduction on um, uh, on yoga, Surabhi, with that really personal uh, story of of diabetes and how it affects people, and uh, and of course Srikantaji with that. beautiful interplay of of science and religion so what i um oops anjali do i have to um, do anything to share the screen or my slides thank you um is it uh, sorry i will just um, there you go So uh, it was my uh, pleasure and privilege really to to visit the hospital in in uh, um in Haridwar Miji um with years ago uh and and meet the the dia champs really um out there and, and the thing that struck me when i met them is i i've worked for 50 years in one type 1 clinics in the world at kings and we have access to pumps and sensors and all the technology and all the latest gadgets and things but when we asked these people in the room what their glucose levels or what their control was it was better than the control of the people we see who have access to everything and when you looked at the faces and how they are interacting with their diabetes how they are coping with their diabetes what their identity is with their diabetes again it was much stronger they were much happier than uh, a lot of the people i see and it's i think it's not due to anything else but the Uh, love and kindness of swami ji and the way he's built this community of of people together and and i saw this poster uh, made by a class 5th uh, girl kashish choudhury uh, boy uh, class fifth, child um and, and he it really it touched my heart because you know you've got the story of the the child who is labeled as someone with type 1 diabetes someone who's different um maybe the and the children are playing and nahi hum tumko apne sath nahi khelne denge tumko diabetes hai you know and it just highlights uh, what this little child was was feeling about how the diabetes had affected them and i slowed off uh, of google and 
what it should be that even the person might have a calm exterior. If they have diabetes, there's so many things going on in there. Um, what what they eat? Did they have the right insulin? What's their blood sugar? What's going to happen in the long term? If they meet someone, what will that, uh, as Surbhi said, what will the other person's reaction be? That this person has diabetes. Will I get a job? Will I get married? There are so many things uh, that go on that mind that uh, really uh, have a big impact. And it's not surprising, actually, that um, so in literature, we call in this distress. And the distress upset all the things you have to do. You have to prick your finger. You have to take insulin. You have to think of your food, do your excess. Now, of course, all of us have anxiety in other areas as well. It might be financial anxiety, social anxiety, you know, what's going to happen with my uh, job, what's going to happen with my education, what's going to happen with my uh, relationships with other people. And, and these things can layer over. And when you have other things going not so well in your life, maybe the push, the push comes onto the diabetes. That can lead to the and, and we know that people with diabetes are about four or five times more likely than the background population to, to feel depressed, often because of all these things that are going along. And so whenever we see this, uh, one of this story of integrated approach is firstly recognizing that that now people who we look after with type 1 diabetes, these are more common. And instead of just chasing down your blood sugar level, did you injection, did you uh, check your glucose on your finger, looking at their mental health, looking at the emotional health and having strategies in place to help that is really important. Because it could be the person is upset because they have got high HP1C, sugar control is not good, and they don't know how to get it right. And that is a lack of education, lack of teams, that is a lack of maybe the tools, the equipment, the straight. Maybe they have got, you know, after having diabetes for a long time, I see a lot of people with 30, 40, 50 years of type 1 diabetes. And they say, you know, every day I want a couple of days off when I don't have to do all these things. Or, or people who are still not accepting, I want to pretend I don't have diabetes. And on the other hand, you have, as I said, people have things happening in work or at school. And when that goes wrong and your mood is down, then you don't want to do the things, you don't want to do the diabetes care that, that you normally do. And then there's this constant fear, fear of weight gain, fear of complications, fear of failure, fear of not getting the all the sugars right. All these things play in the mind. And so that's where there's a real space and role and, you know, not just, you know, in, in centers dedicated to yoga, like, like the Ram Krishna mission, but also here in the West that, that how can we address this little unease that happened? We calm this down because it's you know it's important to treat that mental health, uh, and if that has some beneficial effects on the physical health, that is a bonus actually. Uh, and so you talk about integrating mind and body, um, and, and so in a, in a simple words, you know you've got the person with the is in the middle. It's uh, as people who give diabetes care and are responsible. Um, uh, positions nationally in the UK, um, we have to make sure that every child, every person who lives with type 1 diabetes has access to the right education, how to use the insulin, how to carbohydrate count, how to adjust the insulin for their food, for their work, for their exercise, so they can do whatever they want to do um, to the full of their ability. You know, I have patients who are uh, professional football players, professional rugby players, people who are, people who are uh, doing shift work, people who are doing heavy manual labor, um, people who are sportsmen uh, doing at athletics, you know, and it's the role of the doctor to know the, have enough knowledge that they can give to the patient with without education. You know, that perfect care team who wraps around the patient, not just looking at the sugars, but also looking at the emotional health. And the top side there, you also need to be able to provide equipment. It's not having someone who wants to do well but then there's access to the strips and uh, access to the technology. And it was lovely to see the project in Bangalore around automated pancreas project. But the reality is even in the UK, access to that sort of technology is limited by cost. Its cost is about five lakh rupees a year. About uh, And really even in the UK in the healthcare system, people can't afford that because you still need the pump and the sensor to run that um, algorithm. 
And then finally, of course, you need to have that way when the mind is a bit upset, how can you calm it down, bring things together? Um, because if the mind is, uh, as we say in Hindi, vichilit, upset, then you can't use the education properly. You can't access your team properly. You can't use your technology properly. So having a calm mind, balanced mind, is, is a key to make use of all. And that's, I think, what we all mean by that integrated approach to diabetes, bringing together the best of education, technology, and psychology to help our patients. So I had a small message. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you. I'll be uh, very happy to answer questions uh, towards the end of the panel. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary. That was a beautiful exposition of the uh, knowledge, the psychology, and the technology. And also, uh, it was really uh, great to see how you explored the, the pancreas and the mind connection and how by actually controlling the mind, you also, to some extent, control diabetes and the uh, complications, uh, especially in the mind, uh, go beyond blood sugar and insulin. And uh, therefore, uh, something for the mind, such as yoga, dhyana, pranayama, all those exercises, can be very beneficial. That was great. And uh, I look forward to further comments from you during a question and answer. So now uh, I have the honor and uh, privilege of introducing our last speaker, uh, but not the least, Dr. Rabi Khan. He is the president of Cardio Diabetic Society. He is the secretary of Southeast Asia Diabetic Foundation. He's also the joint secretary of Uttarakhand Association of Physicians of India. He's chairperson and he's also a full professor at Department Research Committee at All India Institute of Medical Sciences. And he's also a published author. He has written a book, I and My Diabetes. And he's also written a book, Updates on Alcoholism and Alcohol-Related Diseases. And uh, we'd love to hear what Dr. Ravi Kant has to say uh, about the management of diabetes, Dr. Ravi Kant. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shushi, and uh, it's really a privilege to be amongst you. Am I audible to all of you? Yes. Right. I'm trying to fix my slides because this uh, platform is quite new to me. I'm not... Uh, My slides visible to you? Yeah, are they visible now? Yes, one minute, one Slides are visible to all you? I'm not able to see them. Yeah. Yeah. Are my slides uh, visible to all of you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, you can. Yeah. So let us uh, move ahead with the. You know. Yeah. So uh, let us move ahead with the. You know. Uh, I, I must say thanks to uh, Swamiji, Swami Dayadipanan, and who, with whom I am associated for almost two years or so, and uh, really glad and happy to see his work. And uh, the magical thing is that he has brought about the entire one diabetes management. So uh, this is just a sensitive session. To begin with, I'll post certain pictures in front of you. So these are certain pictures. Uh, are my pictures moving? Yeah, I am not. I am not able to, uh, you know, see it in my own my screen. Yeah. So these are the pictures of certain food items that I love very much. They are quite tasty, and uh, we, uh, you know, we want them to be on our dining table every time that we eat our food, maybe lunch or dinner, and some Indian traditional food some uh, sweets as well as many items yeah so go about the you know integrated management of type 1 diabetes much has already been said about uh, and uh, we already know that uh, 
a human being consists of uh, mind body and soul uh, regarding soul swami has already told and much has been said about uh, uh, you know dhyana pranayama and many more postures that take care of uh, you know in a sense especially by pranayam and uh, other postures now let us talk about the body which is a physical form and how to take care of the body uh let me take you through certain uh, hard facts about managing diabetes and managing uh, you know other chronic illnesses like cardiac disease and so on let me put forward a fresh diabetes prevention study wherein we included 522 middle aged overweight persons with impaired glucose tolerance it was randomized to brief diet and exercise counseling or intensive individualized instruction goal was to reduce 5% of the body weight and saturated fat fat is less than 10% yes hello yeah less than 10% energy and should be fat less than 30% of total energy intake with fibers of course more than 15 grams per 1000 kilo calories and physical activity more than 150 weekly this is a standard regime that we prescribe to most of our diabetic patients uh, to follow now let us see what the, the this effective program brought about uh, in this finished finish diabetes prevention study dr ravikant yeah doctor, yeah and I, could you could yes, you put it in uh, full screen mode so that we can do see the full screen we're not yeah, seeing the whole screen sure. yeah is it is it is it visible now uh, no you, you, no see there is screen yeah here you go thank you thank you yeah so what we see in this finish uh, diabetes prevention study that uh, the patients yeah after 4 years the risk of diabetes was reduced by 58% so this is the benefit of treating the metabolic syndrome and to share with you a very interesting fact that we have recently concluded our cmr study in the rural population of india we included area like rishikesh and approximately 12 other districts in uttarakhand totally hilly and rural areas where we We, we feel there is this hardly any infiltration of fast food and uh, uh, these fried uh, items so we analyze the traditional indian food consisting of these samosa jalebi pakodi and traditional indian food that we love very much and to the you know utmost surprise that we can see that the you know prevalence of metabolic syndrome is approximately 25 to 40% varying from place to place and there is a high prevalence of uh, this lipidemia in rural indian population who we say that hardly they are dependent on fast food but uh, i must uh, share the idea that fast food may be fast food for a country but may be maybe traditional for uh, some other countries so for example these samosa jalebi and pakoras they are quite common in india they are considered considered as traditional indian food but they are equally harmful the food that contains most of salt sugar and fat they of course are very you know dangerous so we have screened school, school students as well now to go about the you know dietary component and how to fix the problem of metabolic syndrome and dyslipidemia and thereby reducing the uh, you know diabetes type 2 and specifically how to you know take care of uh, type 1 diabetic patients by natural means so these are certain molecules which are really you know found useful in managing uh, lipid uh, in uh, basically diabetic population and otherwise also they are seen to have a level 1 evidence or at least level 2a evidence in preventing the cardiovascular risk in various class of people the promising molecule like uh, berberine is a classical example which is having a level 1a evidence and with a dose of 500 to 1500 mg is supposed to reduce the ldl by 20% and has a direct vascular effect is it's not demonstrated but still it has been seen to reduce a lot of uh, parameters including glucose and homa index and blood pressure in otherwise patients who are taking berberine similarly the green tea extract is very very useful and so in lipid proteins if we talk about polyunsaturated fatty acid omega 3 their role has already been you know discussed in length and breadth and they have been found to have direct vascular effect 
effect in cardiovascular biomarkers and reduction in you know inflammatory markers in diabetic as well as non diabetic population similarly we have so many other food items with us naturally occurring food items like oregano and so on similarly spinulan curcumin curcumin nowadays is, is, is you know you a big weight has come it has got so many properties including anti inflammatory property it has got a you know beta cell stimulating capacity this has got a you know uh, this has got a insulin uh, sensitizing capacity and many more arena of uh, curcumin are being explored so the concept of integrated management of type 1 type 1 diabetes is not a newer one but the practice is of course a newer one we can uh, treat the uh, patient with type 1 diabetes right from uh, exercise point of view along with natural food exercise yoga and pranayam because they have to live long and they have to pass the life with uh, uh, type 1 diabetes so i believe that integrated uh, management is the uh, right so we are many more food items i need not go into the details of each and every food item if uh, in some other forum we can share these uh, really uh, useful products uh, for uh, management of uh, diabetic both type 1 and type 2 although their uh, efficacy remains uh, elusive and needs to be uh, you know uh, revealed in type 1 diabetics but of course that diabetes is well accepted in Uh, this is an adenoid therapy to uh, type 2 diabetes so i must share the uh, you know rapidity at which the type 2 uh, diabetes mellitus is increasing similarly what we are finding the changing lifestyle over a long period of time will of course lead to genetic changes and we are bound to have a, a huge population uh, with diabetes over a few uh, decades or uh, maybe Three four decades later, because today morning only when we were conducting South East Asian Diabetes Foundation conference, two days conference webinar, it was well appreciated that Indian population is not or South Asian population is congested. There are so many aspects that we differ. The mean age of onset of diabetes in Indian setup is four decade or latest fifth decade, as opposed to six decade in Western population. Our insulin resistance is high. per body weight per kg body weight we are different from western population and in so many aspects we are different now i have an addictive lifestyle i have a cholesterol i have high blood pressure i have high waist measurement i have overweight i have impaired glucose tolerance i have heart disease i have diabetes in my life many people in my community have diabetes what this is doing basically this is trying to have incorporated a permanent change in genes because environmental factors over long period of time have a genetic change a human being is a human being in india same as china same as us same as uk but why their colors are different why their hair are different when we are same it means the environmental uh, aspects have got a lot of uh, impact on genetic change on long term basis so we need to control all these factors by changing lifestyle by being included more and more in the spirituality and uh, Uh, yoga and pranayam now what are the pillars for uh, control of these uh, you know non communicable diseases so i must share with the primary prevention which is a health promotion specific protection now here lies the role of yoga pranayam and many more lifestyle changes like exercise and uh, dietary management early diagnosis and from treatment as a secondary prevention all we know but our idea is why not to at the primary prevention level but i will go a step ahead and i i will advocate the primordial prevention this primordial prevention has a relatively new concept this is the prevention of development of risk factors themselves so what the, what i was talking about a few minutes back is really the same so if we control the risk factors in our uh children today so if the seed there is see change in the uh, prevalence of diabetes it is very important to change the environment that promotes major risk factor development so how to bring it the, the 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 education education and education 
is the only key to this. So more and more the people are educated, diabetic, non-diabetic, and they have a primordial prevention concept in their mind. They can at least, uh, you know, stop the occurrence of new diabetes as well as if it occurs, they can they can they can arrest it at the primary prevention level by specific protection and health promotion schemes and so on. So what is driving the diabetes epidemic over seven crisis of this key, almost 70 percent South African women are over it and they are not less than that. So can diabetes be prevented? Yes, type 1 diabetes can cannot be prevented as of now, but the studies have come into uh, picture that if a lady, pregnant lady, they are supplemented with adequate amount of vitamin D, the future generations would have low type 1 diabetes mellitus. This has been proven beyond doubt. So now, if we say, can diabetes type 1 be prevented? Yes, it can be prevented. It has been seen then those persons who are supplemented with vitamin D adequately in their adulthood, they develop less uh, type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes, of course, is preventable. Already we know that this, this is sort of a lifestyle disease. But yes, one, one tool we have got um, in the armamentarium of preventing the diabetes uh, so far as type 2 is concerned. So yes, we are exercise, healthy eating, diet, and uh, insulin, of course, type 1 and OSC for type 2. I am not. Uh, going in the detail. So here lies the, uh, you know, holistic concept at the center of which lies the integrated management of diabetic population, which incorporates physical trainer or meditation, yoga expert, a balanced life and healthy eating with, you know, lifestyle modification for, uh, you know, better life. So these are all uh, aspects of uh, managing a diabetes. We all know. Yes. So the aim of management is to address the risk factor, keep the target. At V1C should be kept well below 7%. We all know blood pressure management, lipid management, weight reduction, stop smoking, use of aspirin in type 2 diabetic patients and the statins in type 2 diabetic patients specifically. So only when company, if you want to have some snacks in between, but otherwise, every calorie count, count, and count. So counting your calories has got a lot of lot of impact in managing diabetes, especially type two and nonetheless type one. Because children are crazy about eating, and they have a big time to play less. That needs to be factored in while you are managing patients with type one diabetes, and it is equally important, as Swami has said, that the basic principles of yoga needs to be taught early in the childhood so as to have synergistic effects of so many organs. Say, for example, this Mayurasana is very, very promising in secretion of insulin, Mandukasana, and many more asanas uh, because expert is there, Swami is there. I will not go into details of these asanas. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, if a person is balanced to his actions, so far as mind is concerned by positive thinking and soul is concerned by, you know, spirituality and pranayama, and so far as phys physics is concerned in the form of physical activity and exercise, and of course to take care as a fuel, a balanced diet, mostly vegetarian and to those who are not accepting the fatty acid rich diet uh, containing fish and other healthy foods is a cornerstone of managing diabetic epidemic. And hence, we can not only prevent type uh, 1 diabetes, but also we can take care of so many extra, you know, costs that are incurred in the hospitalization of these type 1 diabetic patients from time to time. And of course, we like to have a, we will give a very fruitful, very energetic, very motivated, and uh, a younger generation who is full of uh, energy and positive attitude. I think I will not go much into the detail of my, for the slide. With this, I will thank you all very much for giving me a platform to interact with you all. I hope it will go a long way. And recently, today only, I talked with Dr. Joseph, who, who has come up with a you know newer 
newer uh, uh, product is that to say is a is a, a product that is bringing a huge change that we even see with taken over uh, two months of time or three months of time this has already been uh, in ada meetings and hopefully if we get a chance in time next time i will introduce up joseph as well to showcase his work and to display what he can do and it will be a welcome move to include people like him who are really doing a real job wonderful job to metro tech with this i thank uh, swami ji and his entire team for uh, giving me opportunity to be on this platform and interacting with you all thank you Thank you, Dr. Ravi Khan. That was a beautiful overview. May I request you to lower your camera so that we saw your head. We want to see your heart to the whole body. Oh, You're beautiful. And I really also enjoy it. Yeah, just lower the camera a little bit. Uh, we're only seeing the upper part of your face. That's better. OK, but is it OK? Yeah, better, yeah. yes. Actually, this, this, this laptop is very new, very new to me. Uh, I had a connect, I connected with my Mac. So Thank that's, you. that's Thank why you. I have to use okay, I'm able to showcase what I wanted to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed uh, you talked about primary and secondary prevention as well as uh, the primordial prevention. So I'll come back to that. We got a lot of interest, a lot of questions. So my first question is to Dr. Pratik Chaudhary. We heard that uh, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder. Uh, some of the viewers would like to know if there's a genetic component and also could you also briefly touch upon diabetes, type 1 diabetes and impotence? Dr. Chaudhary. Thank you. Um, so uh, this is a very common question, is type genetic? But actually, than 10% people with type 1 diabetes, any other person with type 1 is in their family. So most people will be, will be the only person in the family who have type 1 diabetes. Uh, whereas with type 2 diabetes, actually, it's, you know, we all know it's so common in the, in the families. So the genetic part of type 1 diabetes is just that you have a higher risk. You have certain genes that put you at a higher risk. But if you have that gene, it doesn't mean that you're going to get type 1 diabetes. You can't predict when people, a lot of mothers care, will my child have type 1 diabetes? So the, the risk is about just less than one in 10. So if, uh, if you have type one diabetes for your child to get it less than one in 10, and that could happen at any time in their life. Um, so not when they're young, it could be when they're five, 10, we're seeing an increase in type one diabetes diagnosed in the ages of 20 to 30, 35 even. Um, so uh, while the genetic I think a lot of it is random chance. Um, Type 2 diabetes is much more genetically or family driven. If your parents have type 2 diabetes, you've got a very high risk of getting it. Um, and the second point of Dr. Sushil, you asked me to cover is uh, around impotency. And I think that's to the talk of fitting um, the mental part and the emotional part with the diabetes. Because yes, of course, if you've had long standing type 1 diabetes and have struggled to maintain the control, impotency is one of the long time patients but actually if you think about it um the mental side comes in much earlier because if you don't have any of the other complications of type 1 diabetes your you know your feet are okay you can feel things okay and if someone is struggling with these sort of issues it's probably more to do with the diabetes distress the depression the psychological impact of diabetes and how it affects them and i think that is where um becoming oneself calming down, using mindfulness to uh, helpful because there is this input in the physical and the mental health. So I hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Dr. Ravi Khan, can you spend just two minutes and tell us about your concept of primordial prevention for diabetes? Yeah, yeah, sir, please. Uh, basically, the is the forward. Uh, for example, uh, you have a patient with the CAD. Stenting is not the option. Managing this is not the option as a second level prevention. Protection is not the option. This will recur again and again. Required to prevent occurrence of the risk factors 
by early institution of healthy lifestyle and like childhood. So if we look at the explorers of the past century, even you will find that there is a lag of up to 10 or 50 years or so before these diseases manifest. So regularly engaging the youngsters right from the school school going children. That the education must be a healthy level or has to be medical education for the school. I am advocating it again and I am to be aware of this, this one. First, a subject, elementary maybe, right from the or where people can yes, study our control your diet to you know plate size say for example as india we we serve the same amount of food or we use the same things that we're eating in but that requirement is absolutely different so it should it, it must be a muscular made plate for a child where he must see himself, must see himself that amount of food so it seems this of the plate so they will stop eating for eating a kid. Similarly, you know, education, education, you can put on the health, the teachers, and the parents. Until as we have very important the school education in so, the sorry, sorry to management. Hold sorry to hold you up there, Dr. Your audio is breaking. Your audio is breaking. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you. Probably if you switch off your video, I think your audio will improve. Yeah. So, Dr. Shrikant, a question to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the please tell us about something that showed about the availability and affordability of insulin pump and those technologies for children in India, and Dr. Pratik can chime in too also there. Okay. Very important question. For the first time, we started the insulin pump program in 2002 in this country. We had the first insulin uh, certified program from Medtronic. We had five trainers. The program started on the dining table of a young man with type 1 diabetes. He was a volunteer. And three of our trainers were type 1. But I'm still telling you, for several re yes, um, it is expensive. It is beyond the reach of the common man. I tell people, if you can afford a Maruti uh, uh, car for your spouse or daughter, it's equivalent to that. It is expensive. Uh, and also, for some reason, the uptake of pump is not as good as it should be. And I put the blame on the medical fraternity. Uh, first, the doctors have to be comfortable about the pump. So there is a lot of discouragement. Don't worry. Now, the glucose sensors have become quite popular. And one more thing, even the pump companies have not been active. There are three, four companies. Uh, Roche came and dropped out. So I think there is uh, India has a large growing middle class. And I think if there is a concerted effort between the medical profession, uh, the cost will come down. But I'm telling you very soon, if uh, God is kind, uh, you will have a make in India pump. A lot of good things. Like right. People like Pratik all over the world are helping. The, the interesting thing is I'm getting requests from America to make a pump for America. I'll give an example. GE made an ultrasound in India telling it is for a poor country. But now it is used all over the world. So we need a low technology. It will happen. And do you know the artificial pancreas which Ryan is promoting is all open source. We use an outdated metronic and uh, it is not a commercial one. It will happen. Uh, let us give our prime minister two to three years. That's Thank my you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So now I have, I have several questions from uh, Swamiji, but uh, you have Swamiji only six minutes in which you have to cover three questions for me. One question is, you can skip whichever one you want to skip, okay? The bonus insulin, the second question is the family support, the third is the, uh, the group therapy. But there's also a very good request from somebody, if you can just share some asanas, yoga and pranayama with us for five minutes. And before I give up, there's one question that just come in. Does mental stress during pregnancy in case of diabetic woman cause type 1 diabetes for her baby? 
the answer is no. Very good. So you can you can take in whichever order you want to take. It's all yours now, and you got five minutes to do the whole yoga, pranayama, dhyana, and change our lives. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Herculean task. But it is possible. Abhi nahi to kabhi nahi. If it is possible, it is possible now. Otherwise, never it's going to happen. So those who are all attending as panelists, dignitaries, and audience, I request everybody. Yes, yoga should be way of life. Yoga, our life path should be. कहाँ से जहाँ हम सोते हैं वहाँ से लेके सुबह उठने तक early to bed early to rise have a proper dinacharya so what does that mean if you follow this your body and mind is at equilibrium if you take proper rest in the night you will be able to work throughout the day happily joyfully your body and mind if it is at equilibrium no stress you have got very less chance of getting this ease your body and mind if it is in ease form you will not get disease so it's as simple as that so if you have a proper routine then right kind of eating right kind of living what is all that is good good food as we have learned through various uh, panelists fresh fruits and vegetables should be taken in abundance and the cooked food whatever we are eating it should be out of unprocessed cereals again the cereals whatever i eat also should contain sufficient amount of cooked vegetables so right way of eating and right kind of eating now coming to right kind of living Yes, I should always try to understand the purpose of life. If I can be happy, people around me can be happy. Then we can build a happy world. If you have this concept, if you train our mind, intellect in this direction, you will become better person. If your body and mind is nice, you will have less chances of getting any disease. Now coming to basal bolus concept in India. Yes, it is very much possible. We have taught to the illiterate, ah, the poorest of the poorest children and parents, how to take basal bolus concept insulin for treating type one diabetes, to keep their blood sugars normal, to make them happy, to keep them health healthy. Basal bolus concept to separate insulin is a must. The children and family should be taught to how to do. Measure their blood sugars, maintain a proper blood sugar charting. It is very much possible, and role of parents and support group meeting is a must. If you ask me, if you want to have a healthy children and family, the parents and the support group meeting is a must. DSME, diabetes self management education, along with yoga. can make them extraordinary children what are few yogasana everybody should practice surya namaskara we call it as king of asanas before we practice surya namaskara we should practice some free hand exercise sukshma vyayam so that all the joints will get relaxed so free hand exercise sukshma vyayam as surya namaskaras and as rightly mentioned by our speakers the internal organs if they are functioning properly we have less chances of developing metabolic disorders so to take care of the internal organs we should do proper asana and pranayama so asanas already we have mentioned matsendrasana mayurasana vakrasana ushtrasana mandukasana shashakasana so that will mainly act on the internal organs which are in the abdomen so after doing this asanas few pranayamas one is anulom vilom this will help to relieve everybody from the stress including health workers to the patients then comes our ujjayi pranayama for all thyroid disorders hold your throat tightly and breathe in so ujjayi pranayama bastrika for proper breathing proper oxygen supply through lungs bastrika 
then kapal bati tuck in your stomach then omkara oh, oh, and just focus on your breathing relax forget everything that is outside go in and focus yourself on the breathing inhalation exhalation so if all of us can practice at least 10 minutes daily i am sure we will all get immense benefits and the type 1 diabetic children at haridwar are the living example for that thank you one and all namaskar so uh, i think we're coming towards the end my grateful thanks to uh, all the panelists dr pratik choudhury from england dr shikanta from bangalore dr ravi kant from uttarakhand and swamiji from haridwar uh, this is a beautiful and like experience you you people are doing wonderful work all over the world and doing so much good work for type 1 diabetics and there is so much hope you gave you told us the a message of hope a message of technology a message of how to manage mind it was so beautiful i learned so many new things today i hope everybody else listening must have learned that too and i i really uh, am grateful to you all I'm also grateful to American Association of Yoga and Meditation for providing this uh, platform through which this uh, webinar came to you. And uh, my grateful thanks also to Anjali Ji and Somaya Ji. Anjali Deshmukh is a tireless worker. You do not know how much background work goes into making all this. We just come and speak, but they make it happen. So I'm grateful to both of them. And uh, Anjali Ji, can you just put on the, the next uh, webinar that we have coming up on the screen for everybody to watch? Or Somaya Ji? So anyway, uh, this should be available on our uh, website. It says it's on my ticker. I can't see it. What is a ticker? OK, so the next seminar is on the 27th of September at 10, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. It will be at uh, 9.30 p.m. Central Time in the USA. And the next seminar will be on COVID-19 therapeutics, where we stand now. So please come and join us. Uh, Thank you for joining. Thank you for being with us. And uh, my grateful thanks to you all for being here. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you.